Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his suffering by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As providence would have it, I was present to an ecumenical delegation in San Salvador when he was assassinated. He was a man who spoke truth to power and paid the ultimate sacrifice. He was a friend of the poor and the oppressed, those who were persecuted and killed solely for pleading for justice and a peace of whatever there was. A peace. He was the voice of the silence. And in March 1980, I was part of a small delegation of U.S. church leaders who went to be with him to express solidarity because he was making a courageous struggle on behalf of his people. Comparten con nosotros esta celebración de la Palabra de Dios y de la Eucaristía Nuestros hermanos que forman una misión ecuménica que visita al Salvador estos días Para darse cuenta de nuestra situación en asunto de derechos humanos El reverendo William Whipler, del Programa de, Desa de Derechos Humanos del Consejo Nacional de Iglesias de Estados Unidos. That Sunday morning in Mass, his sermon was particularly powerful. He concluded with a plea and then a command to the young soldiers, having made a plea that's almost unforgivable by the military. He said, stop the killing of your brothers and sisters, even if he means disobeying orders. Can't put up with that. Sentimos pues en ellos la solidaridad de Norteamérica en su pensamiento cristiano. Y así comprendemos cómo el Evangelio puede iluminar las diversas formas de sociedades y siempre desde la perspectiva del respeto al hombre, como nos lo ha revelado nuestro Señor, se siente solidaria con una iglesia que precisamente trata de defender esos derechos del hombre tan pisoteados en nuestra patria. Le agradecemos mucho. I didn't go to the altar with the Roman Catholics in our delegation to receive communion because I didn't want to embarrass the others. He had introduced me as an Anglican, and I knew what the general rules were. He walked through the cathedral and into the 
the street, the cathedral having 3,000 people inside, he walked then to the street to give communion to another five or 600 outside who couldn't get in. And he had to give communion because no one would receive communion except from the hands of their bishop. I was praying for the church in El Salvador, for the archbishop, for the people of El Salvador. I had my eyes closed, standing away from the altar, and his voice said, my brother, do you want to receive the sacrament? And it was the archbishop. I did. I was the last person to receive communion from his hands. A privilege. A, a, a symbol of love. And I believe that we have, in a very real sense, begun to become part of a universal church. His statue stands in the Hall of the Greats in Westminster Abbey. It is one of the new statues that is over the main entrance of uh, the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in Manhattan. All throughout America, he is called San Romero. So the canonization of this man has already occurred, and finally our brothers in Rome are catching up. I truly believe in the depths of my being that I've had the privilege of knowing, touching, learning from, and sharing friendship with one of the prophets and the saints of the church universal. And in our in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Seguidores de Cristo, allá en Estados Unidos, vienen a compartir con los seguidores de Cristo aquí en El Salvador. Y ellos, en la gran nación del norte, son voz de evangelio contra las injusticias de aquella sociedad. Así como vienen a darnos solidaridad para que nosotros, pueblo de Dios aquí en El Salvador, sepamos también denunciar con valentía las injusticias de nuestra propia sociedad.